It's almost time now to begin coverage of the 15th in our series of televised championship games. And it's a good spot for Bob Starr and I to give you our comments on the teams getting ready to play in this final game. And as a beginning point, we'll take a look at some videotaped scenes we made of this afternoon's first semifinal game. And in that one, of course, it was Galesburg, which, de Galesburg, rather, which defeated Belleville in a very tight game by a score of 65 to 64. And the young man that we're most interested in here is Galesburg's number 33, Dale Kelly, who has now chalked up 105 points. He's in the dark uniform there, the rebound taken. And here is Kelly coming up court with it. Good moves, good ball hander. Here's a shot, beautiful shot. And he threads that needle as he has done so many times. 105 points for this young fella. Now you'll see again as Belleville, with the score tied, comes down court. Unable to score. And there's a very fine defensive move. Getting set for his shot. <clears throat> and again, it was Dale Kelly who went on from there to take that and to score two points, put them out in front, and they stayed out in front to win that ball game. Now we're also going to take a look at the, some video shots of the second semifinal game, which was played this afternoon. And in that one, Thornton overwhelmed Decatur by a score of 67 to 45. And Bob, I'm going to ask you to uh, give us a little commentary here as we take a look at the videotape on that one. Good, Vince. Uh, of course, Thornton is paced by the big man, Jim Ard. He's six feet seven inches tall, and we'll see him block the shot right there. That leads to a couple of points here, and Ard will be the man who will score. This is the kind of thing that Kelly and his teammates will have to contend with tonight. They'll be the shorter ball club. Uh, probably uh, Lamar Thomas will have the chore of trying to hold down Dale Kelly. They like to work Ard like this. He's 6'7", active. He missed the shot, goes after it, and gets two out of it. This is just a sample of the kind of action we're going to see in this next ball game between uh, Galesburg and Thornton. Well, that one certainly shapes up as a real tough one coming up. It'll be interesting to see what Galesburg does to try to handle Ard and also Lamar Thomas. Right. Uh, a key man in that ball club. He's a, a six-foot boy, a very active boy like Ard and uh, somewhat smaller, strong, and didn't shoot much this afternoon, but has the capability of scoring well. He is a kind of a fellow when, uh, when Thornton of Harvey has a, a real tough job on its hands or find themselves getting uh, in a jam. He is the guy that they look to for the leadership and to take him out of it, Lamar Thomas. One thing I think maybe if we have time to point out, and evidently we don't have time, so we'd better <laughs> get back to you. We'll talk about it as uh, we get into this game, and it's about time for us to get out to game side for it right now. And while we're on the way, here again is Ed McMahon. Thanks, fellas. I'm sure everybody's anxious for that championship encounter to get underway. Vince Lloyd will be bringing you the lineups in just a few moments. You know, when help is asked for, Many dedicated Illinois Bell people respond. Here's how. Drake and Lake. This is Lake, Lake, the truck, and the awful part of the world. The all he knew him. And we need to get out. And we need to get out. During the day, she works at the telephone company. At night, she's a volunteer tutor. She and over 1,600 Illinois Bell people devote their spare time to helping others. They belong to either the telephone pioneers or the volunteer corps two groups of telephone people who offer their time and talent. They collect eyeglasses for the needy, counsel children who need help, gather used clothing, read textbooks to college students who are blind, raise money for the Salvation Army. And said, I will show you, I will take you a camel and What's this word here? There, where? Where is the camera? camera? Working under the direction of professional social workers, telephone people offer their talents and their hearts wherever they're needed. Illinois Bell is proud to recognize these employees 
who extend beyond their jobs, but their concept of service to others. And, uh, it was not in the well, now we're at courtside. This is Jack Trees along with Vince Lloyd as we come to the game which represents the purpose of this great and lengthy tournament, the crowning of the state champion Illinois high school basketball team for 1966. A game in which the pressure packs into a point almost unbelievable for these youngsters from Thornton High School of Harvey and Galesburg who come together tonight in the big one. Galesburg coming in with a record of 27 victories against two defeats. Thornton with 29 victories against two defeats. And we have seen one record broken in this tournament when the excellent Joe Wiley totaled 128 points for a new all-time tournament scoring record, breaking by seven points, the one previously held by Ted Kayaz of LaGrange. But we have a chance for that same record to be broken again tonight, and an excellent chance in Dale Kelly, who scored 37 points this afternoon, has a total of 105 points, needs 24 to set a new record, 23 to tie. But Vince Lloyd, I don't believe that Dale Kelly will have quite as free a search on that mark as uh, was possible to afford Joe Wiley because the big thing, of course, is to win this game. Well, that's very true, uh, Jack. And also, uh, you have to consider the defensive ability of Lamar Thomas time after time this year. Uh, Thornton, Coach Bob Anderson, has had Lamar on the key man offensively for the opposition. And while Thomas has done a very fine job scoring-wise throughout the season, he takes a great deal of pride, personal pride, in his defensive ability. And Anderson, uh, on several occasions, has said that uh, Thomas has come up with some defensive moves that are not coached, not taught to him. These are natural moves that uh, you rarely see in any athlete. And of course, Lamar is not only a fine basketball player, but he won uh, almost unanimous honors in football for uh, Thornton of Harvey as an all-state selection. Fine young man, outstanding athlete in almost every respect. The Galesburg Silver Streaks are out in the court right now. This is a big, tall club, not exceedingly big, of course. They don't have that man that uh, you associate with dunking. Matter of fact, their tallest is 6'4", Terry Childers. But they do have strength. They do have good agility. A well-disciplined ball club on the court. And obviously, they would not uh, be here in this championship game tonight if it were not for the multitudinous talents which they possess on the court. So we are expecting an outstanding game, as usual, here at the Assembly Hall before, of course, a packed house in this 59th annual tournament in which, in just a short period of time, actually, a new Illinois champion is going to be crowned. And whether it will be from the suburban area of Chicago, north of Harvey, or whether it will be from downstate Galesburg, only time will tell. Thornton of Harvey now making its appearance out here on the court. In just a moment, we'll be having the introduction of the starting lineups, and then this championship game will be getting underway. Third place, of course, has already been decided as Belleville defeated Decatur for that spot. Only number one and number two remain. And, of course, the big trophy for number one. Galesburg, many observers say, the team that has come along very strong this year. Coach John Thiel has done a remarkable job with them. Uh, many of their most ardent supporters the opinion at the beginning of the season that this ball club would not make it to the Sweet 16 or to the Elite Eight, and certainly not to this honored spot here tonight battling for the championship. But they have done it. They have worked very hard, of course, under their coach John Thiel, a very popular young man. They have learned their trade very, very well, and they will certainly deserve to be in this spot here tonight. So virtually all is ready now for the final game to determine the Illinois State High School champion. Matter of fact, we are going now to have the introductions of the starting players.
for Thornton High School. For Thornton High School, number 32, at forward, six feet two, a senior, Bob Landowski. Number 34, at forward, six feet five, a senior, Paul Gilliam. Number 35, at center, six feet seven inches tall, a senior, Jim Ard. Number 11, at guard, six feet tall, a senior, Richard Rattery. And number 31, the guard, six feet one inch tall, a senior, Lamar Thomas. And the coach of Thornton, Bob Anderson. For Galesburg, number 44, at forward, six feet tall, a senior, Barry Swanson. Number 52, at forward, six feet three, senior, Bob Jasperson. Number 54, center, six feet four, junior, Terry Childers. Number 14, guard, five feet nine, sophomore, Roland McDougall. And number 32, a guard, 5'11", senior, Dale Kelly. And the coach of Galesburg, John Thiel. Now there you see Galesburg, Silver Streaks in their final huddle before taking the court here against Thornton. And our championship game is underway. Here is Jack Reeves. Here comes the big one. We're ready to go now. Thornton is wearing the dark uniforms against Galesburg in the white. Whistle blows on the tip-off. And the foul is called on Dale Kelly. Dale Kelly, star of the Galesburg team, committing the personal foul and going to the free-throw line is Bob Landowski of Thornton and a chance to put Thornton first on the scoreboard. The shot is good, and Thornton takes the lead. One to nothing over Galesburg. Dale Kelly bringing the ball up the court. His backcourt partner is the finest sophomore player I've ever seen in the tournament, Roland McDougall. As he feeds in, the shot is blocked away by Jim Hard. Long pass to Ratterly, and it's two points and a foul on the play. Dick Ratterly putting in the two-pointer. Thornton shoots to a... Three to nothing lead and a foul committed on the shot will give Rattery one shot. That one was against number 52, Bob Jasperson. This is Dick Rattery, slightly built, six foot senior. Rattery hits, completes the three pointer and puts Thornton into a four to nothing lead. This is Roland McDougall bringing it across the court for Galesburg. Trying to find a way away from the pressure. And Dale Kelly relieves, moves into the corner, now looking for a spot to shoot, finds it. Off the rim and coming up with the ball is Lamar Thomas. Rattery has to spin back, gives it to Thomas. Thomas from the side. And the rebound is taken by Jasperson for Galesburg. This is McDougal with the ball again. Jasperson from the side, but he took a step too many, moving his pivot foot as he let go with the shot. Traveling is called, and it's still four to nothing. Thornton, we've just begun this battle for the championship of the state of Illinois. Lamar Thomas to Rattery. He's free at the line, and the shot is good. Dick Rattery heating up. Now has scored five points, and Thornton has gone to six consecutive points with Galesburg yet to find the rim. This is the brilliant Dale Kelly with the ball. McDougall lets go with a long left-hander that soars through the basket. And finally, the drought has broken for Galesburg, and it's 6-2, to two, Thornton. 
Jimard feeds underneath. Rattery is all alone, and what a night he is having in this first few minutes. He has scored seven points of Thornton's eight. Dale Kelly double teamed in the corner. Time is called. And so we look at the early trends in this game that shows Rattery from the guard position being sprung around the outside by Thornton and having himself a sort of field day. This 59th Illinois High School Association basketball tournament is being brought to you by the men and women of Illinois Bell Telephone. a battle of the cheerleaders too as the Thornton team gathers on the sidelines now the Galesburg contingent is on the floor the score in the game is eight to two as Thornton has exploded to a quick early lead with Dick Rattery doing the scoring recording seven of the eight points he's number 11 at the left hand side of your picture now Galesburg comes out Resume play by taking the ball in from the sidelines. Dale Kelly taking it, covered by Rattery. And Rattery makes the steal. Dick Rattery is the early star of this ball game by far. Lamar Thomas with a long jumper that misses the rim and is taken by Dale Kelly on the fly. Swanson driving for the ball is able to keep it from going out of bounds but not keep it away from Thornton. Lamar Thomas brings it back. Thomas from the free throw line. Barry Swanson on the rebound. This is Terry Childers in the corner. Dale Kelly picks up the screen. His shot is good. Dale Kelly records his first basket and it's eight to four. Thornton eight, Galesburg four. Now Thornton in the dark uniforms with the ball. From the side, the shot attempt by Gilliam is short and taken on the fly. This is Dale Kelly with the ball. He's another uh, two points as he rides one in from the free throw line. And it is eight to six, and Galesburg has suddenly closed the gap as Dale Kelly finds the range in the opening. And now has gotten four of the 24 points he needs to set a new individual scoring record. Bob Landowski in the corner. And Rattery lets one go again and hits it again. Dick Rattery with his fourth basket and ninth point has put Thornton out in front 10 to six. McDougal almost lost it. Now he's double teamed, but gets it to Terry Childers, who's free at the line, and drops it through. Two points for Childers, and it's 10 to 8. Thornton 10, Galesburg 8. We're in the first quarter with four minutes left to play in it. In this game for the state championship of 1966. Underneath Landowski, rebounding his own shot. Jim Ard going forward, but Barry Swanson steals it for Galesburg. Jim Ard picked that one off as he was trying to dribble up the lane and Thornton has it once again. This Jim Ard, number 35, hands up raised there will remind you a lot of Bill Russell before this evening is over and Rattery has another. Dick Rattery going crazy for Thornton, 12 to 8. And 11 of the 12 points scored by Rattery. Beautiful steal by Lamar Thomas. Rattery has it again. And finally misses one. And they're calling goaltending and he gets it. Goaltending call and the basket is credited to Rattery. And it's Thornton 14, Galesburg 8. And <laughs> Played for five minutes, Vince, and Ratter, he's got 13 points. He is really amazing. Terry Childers retrieves for Galesburg. 
If that tight thought in defense doesn't give him much to do with it. Now Roland McDougal tries one from the circle and scores. Roland McDougal gets his second basket. Thornton leads now 14 to 10. Paul Gilliam from the free throw line. Dale Kelly comes down with the ball. Loses it. Rattery comes in. Feeds off to Gilliam underneath. And the ball bounding off Gilliam belongs to Galesburg. Galesburg setting up that zone. They're obviously trying to keep Hart way out in that high post, not letting him get underneath. Bob Jasperson from the side has two. Now the game tightens up again. It's 14 to 12, Thornton over Galesburg. Whistle blows. And a foul is called on Jim Ard. It's an offensive foul, so it'll go to Galesburg out of bounds. Roland McDougal throwing it into Dale Kelly. Well, Dale Kelly with the ball now is only 5'11". He has a tremendous leap, as you can see then. That bad shot short of the mark. He steal it on the fly by big Jim Ard. And Dale Kelly, because of that tremendous leaping bar, looks like a poor boy who's kicking up out of the water. Will spear a lot of rebounds. Paul Gilliam from the side. And uh, coming in to grab that one is Jim Ard. Bob Landowski had a try at it, and then Jim Ard put it in. And it's 16 to 12 in favor of Thornton. McDougal, trying to get through the lane, is called for charging. Roland McDougal on a charging foul through the lane. We've got a minute and 20 seconds left to play in the first quarter of this game. Thornton in front, 16 to 12. This is Paul Gilliam. Barry Childers clears the boards for Galesburg. Barry Swanson brings it across the center line. And Rattery in the thick of everything almost had himself another one. Dale Kelly off to the side. Nice save. Barry Swanson gets the bat in from Jasperson. But this time, Lamar Thomas takes it. He's all alone, and it's two points. Lamar Thomas makes it 18 to 12, Thornton. McDougal trying to feed, has the ball batted aside, and Rattery has it once again. Rattery looking for a place to feed. The defense catches up. Thomas is clear at the circle. It rolls off. Jim Ard is all alone underneath as he goes wide to spear that rebound. Two points for Jim Ard, and Thornton now has moved out to a 20 to 12 lead with 23 seconds left to play in the first quarter of the game. Rattery, not only the offensive star of Thornton thus far, but doing a brilliant job of defending the fine Dale Kelly. Swanson's shot is rebounded by Lamar Thomas. Out to Ard, back to Thomas, and they'll bring it up on the set. The time is running out. Thomas just won it at the backboard as the quarter ends. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Thornton 20, Galesburg 12. Now here's Vince Lloyd. I had a chance to meet and talk with many of the men and women of Illinois Bell earlier this week. And I want to tell you I have never seen a more enthusiastic crew. And they told me that there are many job openings right now with the phone company. And so if you're a high school graduate looking for a really satisfying job, alongside some wonderful people, just call your Illinois Bell business office any weekday. Now we pause 10 seconds for station identification. Here we go now into the second quarter of play, and Thornton starting off impressively with a tough and powerful defense that is keeping Galesburg away from the basket. 
and unleashing an offense that has keyed around an unexpected source, Dick Rattery. Jim Hard, number 35, the center, for Thornton, ready to jump. And we've got Mike Dreisaitz coming into the game for Galesburg, and he took the center jump at the tip-off. Movement on the pivot foot by Bob Landowski gives the ball to Galesburg. Dale Kelly into Roland Young, or um, Roland McDougal. McDougal with a fadeaway jumper is well short, but a foul is called on Bob Landowski, number 32 of Thornton, and McDougal will get two. Roland McDougal has the first one in. Makes it 20 to 13. And McDougal hits again. 20 to 14 in favor of Thornton. And Thornton has the ball. With Galesburg going into a full court press now. Lamar Thomas bringing it across the center line. Rattery again. Two more. 22 to 14. Thornton out in front. 15 points for Dick Rattery. Look at Rattery cover Dale Kelly. McDougal just uh, flipping one up underhanded. Rebounded by Jim Ard, and now it's Rattery with the ball. Lamar Thomas, fadeaway jump is a beauty. 24 to 14. Galesburg is calling for a timeout. 24 to 14 is the score. Galesburg taking a timeout. Before this game got underway, we had a chance to ask Coach Bob Anderson how he would describe this boy of Thornton, Lamar Thomas, as a leader. Uh, Lamar Thomas is the type of leader. He's not the rah-rah type of boy, but the uh, type of individual that if he makes a mistake, why well, he'll come back twice as hard to make up for his mistake. We're looking down now on the Thornton huddle, waiting for the uh, end of the timeout. Back the Spartan Ball Club gives me the feeling that uh, their strategy was to come out here and hit just as hard, just as fast as they can. Uh, I don't mean physically to hit the opposition, but to try to get that ball in the basket just as quickly as they could, as often as they could, to see if they could try to demoralize this ball club. 24 to 14. At the present time, Thornton out in front, and now the ball goes over to Thornton. Galesburg in the full press. Rattery and Lamar Thomas in the backcourt. Lamar Thomas with it now. Beating underneath to Rattery. He's got two more. Nice pass. 26 to 14. Thornton out in front. Dale Kelly moving into the corner, trying to get around Lamar Thomas, but he found the ball. He carried that ball for a moment in his hand on the dribble. And it goes to Thornton out of bounds. LaViolette has come into the ball game. Bruce LaViolette, six foot one inch junior. Lamar Thomas still going and he goes all the way. Lamar Thomas is quite an athlete. He's an all-state halfback, made all-state basketball, honor roll, president of the Letterman's Club. Kind of a boy you can really get to be proud of. Childers traveled with it as he tried to pivot around and get clear for a shot. So the score holds at 28 to 14, Thornton, and it's Thornton's ball out of bounds. The telecasting of these championship games is being brought to you by the men and women of Illinois Bell Telephone. 
Lamar Thomas making the most of a screen and it goes for two. That's eight points for Lamar Thomas. Now it's Thornton 30, Galesburg 14. McDougal double team has the ball stolen by Thomas. And Thornton takes it again. What a fantastically impressive team this Thornton is here in the first half of this game. We got five minutes left to play in the first half. Landowski going underneath and is fouled as he goes under by Mike Graysites. 42, Mike Graysites committed the foul. That's his first. Nobody had fouled danger yet. Bob Landowski at the line. A little less than five minutes to go in the first half, and he has two shots coming. Thirty-one to fourteen. Roland McDougal coming out as Barry Swanson comes in now in the Galesburg lineup. He's number 44 that you saw momentarily on the right side of your picture. Now Landowski says, everybody ready? And Landowski was as he dropped in the second free throw, and it's 32 to 14. Thornton out in front of Galesburg. Foul call on Lamar Thomas, charging foul as he banged into the Lamar, defensive Lamar, man Lamar, and at the free throw line is LaViolet. Bruce LaViolet, number 12 at the line for Galesburg. Galesburg hunting for the combination that will enable them to get through the locks of the Thornton defense. LaViolet hits for a free throw and it's 32 to 15 in favor of Thornton. Thornton working through the press. Landowski into the line to Paul Gilliam. Gilliam feeds to Ard, who spins away all clear and drops it in for an easy basket to make it 34 to 15. Jim Ard getting his third basket. There's Kelly trying one, missing. Look how high that Kelly went on a rebound at 5'11. He was up there with Jim Ard, 6'7. And Mike Gray Sites who runs 6 4. Thomas on a fadeaway jump at the circle. Childers coming up with the ball. Dump the pass to Swanson. Goes last off Swanson's hand. It was deflected also by number 11, Dick Rattery, but it touched Swanson last and it belongs to Thornton out of bounds. The call is on Barry Swanson. Of Galesburg, Dick Rattery will go to the line. Be sure to stay with us at halftime to learn how some of the parents and girlfriends of these championship contenders feel about the game. Dick Rattery with 17 points is at the free throw line. One shot coming and the bonus if he makes it. Thornton now has widened to a 20 point lead here in this first half. Rattery misses on that one. Uh, Jim Hart couldn't quite get to it as he jammed it against the bottom of the hoop. Dale Kelly has it now, looking for racing room. Can't find it. Feeds to Swanson underneath. It was a nice play, and Barry Swanson has two points to make it 35 to 17. Three minutes and 40 seconds left to play in the first half. Dick Rattery. <laughs> he did it again. That's 20 points. Dick Rattery is hotter than a deep post stove here tonight. 37 to 17. Foul call. The call is on Rattery. Dale Kelly will go to the free throw line. It's the first personal foul recorded against Dick Rattery. Kelly hits, that's five points for Dale Kelly. Makes it 37 to 18. Landowski from the corner. Can't clear much. 
Goes out to the backcourt now. The interception is by Bob Jasperson. Three on two, and it's Swanson taking the feet off. Barry Swanson gets two baskets very quickly here to make it 39 to 18. Or <laughs> Excuse me, 37 to 20. Basket counts. Goaltending. Goaltending, the basket counts. The basket goes to Paul Gilliam on the game board. That basket was credited to Paul Gilliam. attempt by number 42 Mike Graysites resulted in the foul by Jim Art number 35 so Graysites now goes to the free throw line the score is 39 to 20 Thornton over Galesburg and here's Graysites attempt it is good Thirty-nine to twenty-one. Rebound by Bob Landowski for Thornton. Feed to Jim Hard. He has to fight for it. Can't get clear to shoot. And the shot attempt by Gilliam. Missed, whistle blows, foul call underneath, and that is against Bruce LaViolet. Paul Gilliam now going to the free throw line for Thornton. Here's the Thornton rooting section with plenty to be excited about. 39 to 21, Thornton out in front, Gilliam at the line. Landowski scrambles and gets the ball. Feeds to Jim Hart underneath, who lays it over the hoop. That's eight points for Jim Hart. 41 to 21, Thornton in front of Galesburg. <laughs> Dale Kelly made the save. Look at that Thornton defense close in. This is a tough league. And the hook shot by Jasperson, rebounded by Dre Seitz underneath a foul call. And the call is on Gilliam, number 34. Mike Dreisaitz has two shots coming. Number one. 41 to 22. And now the second shot for Dreisaitz. Good one. 41 to 23. Rattery having to be careful there. Did not cross and cross back. He's okay. Beautiful hook shot by Paul Gilliam. 43 to 23 with a minute and 10 seconds left to play in the first half. And with each passing moment, that scoring record getting a little further out of the reach of Dale Kelly. Foul call was on Bob Landowski underneath. Joe Wiley of Belleville has broken the individual tournament scoring record with 100 shootings. Two shots. LaViolette hits. Bruce LaViolette at the line hits on the first one to make it 43 to 24. Dale Kelly of Galesburg in this game. Needs 24 to break the new record. Has five. A little better than a minute to play in this first half. LaViolette records another. 43 to 25 now with one minute left to play in the first half. And Rattery has one loop out on him. Foul call will be on Jim Ard. Hooked an arm over the shoulder. Foul call on Ard. Score 43 to 25 with 52 seconds left in the half, and that's three personal fouls on Jim Art. Let's see it again on our stop action replay. And there you saw as Jim Art hooked over the shoulder of Bob Jasperson. 
and the foul was called. Colin Mays has come in now to replace Jim Ard. There will be some shuffling of positions here. Jim Ard is a tall man, and Garland Mays is at 5'9". Jim Ard has three personal fouls. They want to save him with a little maneuvering room till later in the game. This is Thornton with the ball now. Garland Mays just in the ball game, working in the backcourt as they run Lamar Thomas down into a forward position. Rattery feeds to Thomas. Thomas operating on the pivot, can't find a cutter open, takes it into the backcourt. Traveling call against Garland Mays, moving the pivot foot before he started the dribble, and it's Galesburg's ball out of bounds. Barry Swanson will feed it in, and a uh, momentary lapse there as Dale Kelly was not quite ready for it, and Swanson, as he fed it in, fed it instead to Lamar Thomas, and that's two more points for Thornton, 45 to 25, and a foul call on Dick Rattery. Barry Swanson will go to the line. That's two personals for Rattery. Thornton 45, Galesburg 25. Whistle blows underneath, and Bob Jasperson gets called on that one. Foul on Jasperson, number 52, the Galesburg lineup. And we have just 10 seconds left to play in the half now. Thornton in front, 45 to 25. And going to the line is Lamar Thomas of Thornton to try and add to that margin. He has one shot coming. If he makes it, he'll get the bonus. The one and one situation is in effect. Shot is good. It's 11 points for Lamar Thomas, 46 to 25. <laughs> 47 to 25. 12 points for Lamar Thomas. Kelly feeding to Jasperson. Jasperson shot, short off the rim. The time is expiring. Thomas pitched one the length of the court. So we come to the end of the first half and a startling first half with Thornton exploding from the outset with a tremendous early performance by Dick Rattery moving out into a quick lead and then padding that lead as the half wore on. So then Thornton now at 47 to 25 is in a commanding position with two more quarters yet to be played. At halftime, we have a series of very interesting interviews lined up for you. That'll come right after my wrap up on the first half of the championship game. First, Here's Ed. Well, thank you, Jack. There's certainly a wonderful group of youngsters at the tournament again this year, and we can all be very proud of them. When someone's sick in your family, what do you do when you can't reach your doctor? Uh, what's your son's name? Timmy. All right, thank you. Well, hello there, Timmy. Here, let's have a look at you, boy. Oh, Susie, you stand back by the door. Oh, Mom. Honey, you don't want to be sick, too. I was so worried about him, and I couldn't reach our regular doctor. I finally called the operator. She put me in touch with you. That operator was a real help. If you wondered what you should do when you can't reach your regular doctor, Illinois Bell would like to remind you to simply dial zero for operator. Of course, she can't give you medical advice. You serious? but she knows where to call to try to get the help you need. So if more direct help isn't available, in an emergency, dial zero for operator. She's always there behind your dial, ready to help in any way she can, 24 hours a day. Well, the time has come to take a look back on that uh, surprising first half in which Thornton thoroughly outdistanced Galesburg, surprising because Galesburg uh, came to this point, the championship game, playing uh, what is generally considered the tougher bracket, and Thornton was pretty much untested. But they went sailing through in this first half, largely on the explosive beginning of Dick Rattery. Rattery in the first quarter scored 13 points, as a total of 20. 
at the end of the half. Lamar Thomas, catching up in the second quarter, recorded a total of 12 points. Jim Ard, with four baskets, has eight. Paul Gideon has four points. Bob Landowski, three points. That's the scoring for Thornton High School of Harvey, who lead at the end of the half, 47 to 25. Scoring for Galesburg, Dale Kelly, being covered like a coat of paint by Dick Rattery, has been held to five points. He scored 37 points this afternoon. High point man is the brilliant sophomore, Roland McDougall, who has six. Barry Swanson has two baskets for a total of four. Bob Jasperson has one basket, two points. Terry Childers has two. Mike Dreisaitz has two points. With the championship still to be decided, Bob Starr, Ed McMahon, and Vince Lloyd have gone into the crowd to seek out vitally interested followers of the contending teams to determine their viewpoints and the possible outcome of the tournament. Let's switch first to Bob. We've searched through the stands to find two very attractive ladies who have a keen interest in this championship game. On my right is Mrs. Bob Anderson, the wife of Thornton coach Bob Anderson, and on my left is Mrs. John Thiel, the wife of John Thiel, the head basketball coach at Galesburg. How about the uh, basketball season, Mrs. Anderson? Does it disrupt your family life pretty much? Oh, not too much. We've enjoyed it real a lot this year, I think. Does it get kind of hectic around your place, Mrs. Thiel? The last two weeks have been absolutely something, I'll tell you. Are you looking forward to this one being over, win, lose, or draw, the season right, coming to an right. end? We're so proud of our boys and so happy to be this far and uh, real thrilled, but we will be rather happy to relax for a while. Is uh, Mr. Anderson pretty easy to live with during the course of basketball season? Well, he's usually pretty quiet. He stays kind of to himself. Do you get a keen interest in this kind of a game? Were you uh, kind of born and raised a basketball fan or became when you were married to him? No, I liked sports very much when I was in high school myself, so I kind of carried it on with him. How about you, Ms. Steele? Always been a basketball fan? Oh, my, yes. We're all sports fans at our house. In fact, we've got golfers, baseball players, you name it. Ladies, thank you both very much for coming down. I hope we have a good second half. Thank you both. Now here's Ed with two more fans, one backing each team. Thank you, Bob. I have two people with me with uh, mixed feelings right now. This is uh, Tricia Slaughter, Bob Jasperson's girlfriend. Golly, I didn't think at halftime we'd have this bunch of spread, did you? No, I didn't, but I'm sure the boys will pull through somehow. Uh -huh. Have they had a situation like this through the year where they were down this far at half and then pulled the game out? Well, not this far. I think they've been down at least 15 and have pulled back. You'll have to do some extra special rooting this next half, okay? Yes. And this gentleman right here is Rich... Halbert, who was with the great uh, Thornton team up until just a couple of weeks ago, and then broke his foot. <laughs> I guess you have some itchy feet right now, don't you? You'd like to be in there yourself. Yes, sir. Uh, How are the boys uh, faring in your eyes? Oh, uh, they've come a long way. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the team uh, action is still being maintained, I noticed. They're still playing a team game that has uh, made such a great effect on them. How did you break your foot? Uh, in practice. In practice. Oh. Golly, I'm sorry that you can't be in there, but I know you're sharing with their wonderful feelings. Well, two people have very strange uh, mixed feelings about our game. We'll see what happens this next half. Here's Vince Lloyd with two folks he'd like you to meet. We'd like you to meet a couple of parents of some of these outstanding uh, players here tonight. First of all, this is the mother of Dale Kelly of Galesburg. Mrs. Kelly, I know that you're very proud of your son. Yes, I am. Has he uh, talked to you at all today about that record? No. He's not worried about it, is no. he? No. He has a couple of sisters out there. We have two girls, Carol Ann, 14, and Kim, 8. Are they here tonight? Yes. And Mr. Kelly? He's here. All right. I know that you're pulling for him to come from behind. I sure am. Thank you very much. This is the uh, father of Paul Gilliam of Harvey. And uh, I suppose that Paul is planning to go on to college. Oh, right? yes, sir. He really is. Yes, sir. It's his desire. Is he doing any work uh, yeah, other than schoolwork, I mean? Yes, he's worked with the uh, boys' camp uh, during the summertime. Were they pretty confident about winning this thing here tonight? I, yes, him? sir. They really were. They really were. They look to you like they're playing any better or just about average? Well, they, they vary. The one time they'll get hot and then it's too bad for the other team. I suppose that as long as you can remember, he's been shooting a basketball. Oh, for an awful long time now. Wonderful. Thank you both very much. Mrs. Kelly, thank you. You're welcome. Now let's get back to Tournament Central. It's nearly time to resume our championship game. Jack Drees is on his way back to game side to bring it to you. Now let's switch back to Ed McMahon. Uh, we're all looking forward to that second half and the crowning of our champion. You know, Western Electric makes telephone equipment for Illinois Bell and other Bell system companies. Western Electric also plays an important role in the Illinois business community. Here's how. To more than 200 Illinois communities, Western Electric means business. 
over $130 million worth last year. Western Electric, in performing its role in the Bell system, purchases goods and services from 4,300 Illinois firms, most of them small businesses. Cable reels from the Evans Company of Moline, for example. Dick, in the last 25 years, we've purchased a lot of cable reels from you, haven't we? Yes, you have, Len. And we've certainly enjoyed our relations with Western Electric during that time. Incidentally, we've shipped about 150,000 reels to Western Electric Company over that period of years. It takes a lot. Last year, we manufactured and shipped from Chicago 49 billion conductor feet of cable. That's a lot of cable. Eh? It sure is. I that's right. In making telephone equipment and also in helping to supply Illinois Bell, we rely heavily on other companies. They help Western Electric do a more effective job as the manufacturing and supply unit of the Bell system. Partially blocked by Jasperson, but then he pushed it through Jasperson's hand, and so his was the last contact. And the ball goes to Galesburg. Dale Kelly gets loose, but is short. And that's Jim Ard with the ball. Now it's Rattery taking it from Ard to bring it up across the center line. Galesburg has dropped the off-court press. Gilliam underneath as he takes the bobbled ball. Mike Graysides goes after. Jim Hard cannot be too aggressive on his rebounding. He has three personal fouls against him. And Rattery picks up the ball after it was slapped down by Paul Gilliam. Gilliam's layup is over the rim, but Garland Mays is on the other side and flips it back in for the basket. That's Thornton 57, Galesburg 35. Roland McDougall. Jim Hard gets the rebound. Thornton has the ball once again. Jim Hart is all along and almost brought down. Basket, backboard, and all. It looked like he was going to tear it right out from its uh, foundation, sir, Jack. He's a big man. And of course, uh, you don't get an opportunity very often to step one like that, and he was going to make the most of it, which he did. Galesburg, which for a while looked as though it might be able to cut into that lead, now has fallen uh, 24 points back. What is the tournament attitude of the ball club of Thornton was a question that we've asked here of Coach Bob Anderson, and he gave us this answer. There's a confidence that they can work, to work individually and as a team. their attitude right now is a very healthy one too as they prepare to go into the last two minutes 14 seconds of this third period with a 24 point lead over the silver streaks of Galesburg he's had Lamar Thomas out of there now since uh, well, for the last three minutes or so as he has four personal fouls on him he is holding him in reserve just in case he needs him and his replacement Mays has done a good job now we go back into action and here again Jack Reese. Galesburg bringing the ball up the court with a score 59 to 35 against them. Swanson and McDougal operating in the backcourt. And Dale Kelly is sidelined. Rattery beating the Garland Mays. Paul Gilliam going underneath. That will be no basket. Basket interference by Jim Ard, who was about two feet above the rim and touched it as that ball was still within its theoretical cylinder. McDougal with a left-handed jumper comes off to Mike Dreisaitz. He's underneath and rolls it in. Five points for Mike Dreisaitz. 59 to 37. A minute and a half left to play in the third quarter of the game. Jamard feeding. 
And foul. There was really contact there. It's a charging foul against Bob Landowski, who smashed into the defenders like a ball rolling into some ten pins. And it'll be, as an offensive foul, be Galesburg's ball out of bounds with Swanson bringing it up the court. And it's stolen by Garland Mays. And he ran with that ball before he was able to get rid of it to Rattery. And so it'll be Galesburg's ball out of bounds again with a minute 12 seconds left to play in the third quarter. From the side, a beautiful hit by Bob Jasperson. 59-239. Galesburg playing without their star, Dale Kelly. Rattery shot, rebounded by Gilliam, but he's tied up there by Dre Seitz, and they will jump at the free throw line. Well, with Kelly on the sidelines, I believe it's safe to say that the new tournament scoring record will belong to Joe Wiley of Belleville when this day is ended. That was Swanson getting in, Barry Swanson recording a basket for Galesburg and there's LaViolette on the steal getting one just as quickly and it's suddenly 59 to 43. 20 seconds left to play in the third quarter. And Thornton now is riding out the clock, trying to get the last shot in. Gray Sight coming up to attempt an interception on the ball intended for Jim Hard. Banged into him to draw the foul, and Jim Hard is at the free throw line with 15 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Jim Hard one. Thornton 59, Galesburg 43. Jim Ard with one shot coming, records point number 60 for Thornton. 60 to 43. Roland McDougall. And Jim Ard gathers it in as it comes off. Horn blows the end of the quarter. So we have come now to three quarters of play, and Thornton is 17 points closer than Galesburg to the 1966 state championship. The score is 60 to 43. As Thornton continues both the offensive and defensive pressure, a pressure that saw them able to take exactly twice as many shots as did Galesburg in the first half of play. Thornton getting off 36 shots, Galesburg only able to get off 18. And still they keep it up. A big, strong team is Thornton, and uh, this is the Thornton mascot saying hello in his animal way to all of you watching. That's quite a ferocious wildcat they got there. <laughs> but it's, uh, These are the Thornton cheerleaders out of the court. Well, Galesburg has only been able to cut five points off that uh, lead, which Thornton had at halftime. It was 22 points, down, it was down to 17. And, and uh, Kelly just was not able to hit with the great accuracy that he has shown in the previous tournament game. Now, it may be that the little extra rest he has had, we don't see any indication that there was anything wrong with him. But it may be that that little extra rest will get him an opportunity to get back in there. His vertical jump on his shot is really a thing of beauty. The final quarter of play. We're eight minutes away from crowning a state champion. LaViolette sails in there and records two more points. The ball goes back to Galesburg. Dale Kelly is back in the game. Can't get cleared on the screen. Has to pass off to LaViolette. LaViolette back to Kelly. Kelly took his eye off the ball just a moment too soon. Out of bounds, and it goes to Thornton. <laughs> and 
and Jim, or Dick Rattery has one roll off the rim. This is Swanson with it, bringing it up the court for Galesburg. He drives up the lane, and the call is against Jim Art. The call is on Jim Art, number 35. That is the fourth personal foul on Jim Art. He has one more to go. Barry Swanson shooting on a one and one. He gets it in. This telecast being brought to you by the men and women of Illinois Bell Telephone. 60 to 46. Jim Ard clears the boards. Jim Ard with four personals, but now with a little better than seven minutes to play, the decision on the part of Coach Bob Anderson is to let him in there. Jim Ard goes underneath, goes high in the air to drop it through, and is fouled by Bob Jasperson. The basket counts. The basket counts. He makes the score 62 to 46, and Ard has a chance to pat it with a third point on the play. That's Bruce LaViolette coming down with the ball. Galesburg has it now. The Violet dribbles all the way and puts it in. Nice play. Basket, by the Violet. Basket counts. <laughs> That's going to be all for Jim Art. Foul was on Jim Art, and he is out of the game on personal foul. Scored a total of 13 points. Was invaluable on rebounds. And now will be missing for the final six minutes and 42 seconds of the game. All right. Calling for a timeout now. No, not a full timeout. Just wanted to come over for a little advice. There will be some adjustments here, Jack, on both of these ball clubs now with that big fellow out of there. And Galesburg has uh, got a few more points into that lead. Lamar Thomas has come back in, but he's in a dangerous position, too, with four personals. Here's Dale Kelly at the line for Galesburg. <laughs> Kelly hits. 62 to 49. With the big boy out of there, Galesburg could come. A critical man to lose. <laughs> Kelly hits again to make it 62 to 50. <laughs> Thorn going to try to play ball control here, but uh, oh, they got it back. Almost lost one. Alan Mays, let's go with one, and it's picked off by Jasperson. Galesburg with the ball, Jasperson feeding underneath, almost threw it away, but Swanson made a great grab and scored. 62 to 52, they've cut the lead to 10 points, and Thornton is calling for a timeout. It's timeout in the fourth quarter of this championship game with the score Thornton 62, Galesburg 52. Now let's switch to Ed McMahon. And this is it, the trophy that the champions will take back to their school. Stay with us following this final game, and you'll see the dramatic scene, the presentation of this trophy. Now let's get right back to the game. Vince and I just talking about the way that uh, Galesburg has scored a quick seven points in a couple of minutes here to cut the gap to ten points. And with Jim Hard, their six foot seven inch middleman, out of the lineup having fouled out, Thornton is in a tough position because Galesburg now can rebound right with him. Jim Hard was really controlling the boards and being a fine defenseman as well. And also, their next key man, Lamar Thomas, has got four personal fouls. And so he cannot play an aggressive brand of basketball, but will be operating under restrictions in the closing minutes of this game. 
And we've got six minutes left. A lot can happen. Thornton just holding onto the ball, feeding underneath to Rattery. And the ball is blocked by LaViolette, but belongs still to Thornton. Foul call. It's against Mike Dreisaitz on Paul Gilliam. Five minutes and 29 seconds left to play in the game. Thornton's lead now 10 points. Paul Gilliam hits. 63 to 52. In again. Sixty-four fifty-two as Dale Kelly brings the ball in with a whistling pass to Jasperson. His shot is short. And Lamar Thomas was there to get into an argument on the rebound with Bruce Swanson and with Barry Swanson. We've got a jump ball at the free throw line. The tip to Galesburg. Bad pass. And Thornton has the ball. Boy, Gilliam <laughs> almost had that one bounce off his chest. Galesburg pressuring now. Gilliam at the circle, but he's got to uh, get it back into the deep backcourt. Galesburg's going to have to come after him all the way because they've got to get the ball. They're trailing now by 12 points. About four and a half minutes to play, and they do get it. Bruce Swanson coming across the center line. Galesburg has it once again. Dale Kelly trying to get loose, feeds in. It's a wild uh, ball for a moment. Traveling call against Thornton as they rolled and scrambled for the ball, and it'll be given to Galesburg. The Violet underneath. Rebound by Gilliam. Thornton has it. Beat up to Garland Mays. Pass to Gilliam underneath, but as he was throwing the pass in, Rattery was fouled by Dreisaitz. Boy, you can tell the tenseness of the situation now. Calling for a timeout on the part of Galesburg. Now we pause 10 seconds for station identification. These are the Thorn Rooters whooping it up, and where they were quite confident a short while ago, the situation is getting a little anxious now. But there are almost four minutes left to play, 351. Thornton's lead is 12 points, 64 to 52. They had been leading by 20 points. And then they suffered the crushing loss of their big man, six foot seven inch Jim Ard. And Galesburg has been coming to life with a rush following that eventuality. They're going to make their move, Jack. They're going to have to do it in a big hurry right now, and they still have not been able to get uh, their main scorer, Dale Kelly, into those favorite spots of his out there near that free throw line and up near the top of that circle where he can get that straightaway shot up. Until they can do that, they're still going to be in big trouble. Dick Rattery scores his 21st point. 
And every little point helps Thornton right now. Rattery hits it again. As time is running out, and they've got the points mounting up at 66 to 52. The violet to Swanson. Swanson goes in. And as he gets the shot away, he's followed by Bob Landowski, number 32. So Swanson will have two coming. And the clock will be stopped at three minutes and 42 seconds left to go. Barry Swanson now with two shots coming. He's had nine points so far this evening. And there's his tenth. 66 to 53. Thornton over Galesburg. Sixty six fifty four. Lamar Thomas with the ball closely guarded by Kelly. And interception by Jasperson. He roars down the floor. This is on the layup. The rebound is followed up by Barry Swanson. And again it's ten points. Sixty six fifty six. Battery feeding to get him underneath. The ball goes through the hoop and a foul call on Jasperson. Basket counts. Paul Gilliam has a chance for a three-pointer. His basket made it 68 to 56, and he has a free throw coming. It's four personal fouls now on Bob Jasperson, number 52 for Galesburg. Landowski tipping it and finally it gets tipped over the board and Galesburg will bring it in. Dale Kelly. I'm not quite sure why they make that slow roll with the ball passing it in when they need time. Foul on uh, Dick Rattery. And I believe it occurred before the shot was gotten away. Yes, and it is against Dale Kelly. Kelly. Dale Kelly goes up to the free throw line with two minutes and 48 seconds left to play in the game. And a 68 to 56 score against Galesburg. <laughs> Kelly is short, gets the rebound all clear, but misses on it. Kelly getting the rebound once again. He's fouled as he spins around by Bob Landowski. <laughs> That is number five for Landowski. He has fouled out. So Jim Art is fouled out. Bob Landowski is fouled out for Thornton. And Lamar Thomas, their playmaking guard, has four against him. Waiting now for the substitution to be made. Estes Ross, number 41, looks like he'll be coming in. Estes Ross, number 41. Five foot 11 inch junior. Replacing Bob Landowski for Thornton. Two minutes and 45 seconds left to play. 68 to 56, Thornton's lead is 12 points. Dale Kelly has a chance to do something about it right here on a one and one. Sixty-eight fifty-seven. And again, the margin is 10 points, 68 to 58. Lamar Thomas coming up the middle. Two and a half minutes left to play in the game. Back over the uh, center line. It'll go to Galesburg out of bounds. the side underneath and as he tries to feed off it's intercepted by Lamar Thomas <laughs> uh, 
And the whistle blows against Barry Swanson of Galesburg. He tried to intercept the pass. He fouled Lamar Thomas. We've got two minutes and seven seconds. And a ponytail Thornton cheerleader. Center is in your picture for a moment, but now we're back in the action as Thomas gets set for his free throw and makes it. That's 15 points for Lamar Thomas, 69-58. Two minutes and seven seconds remaining in the game. Seventy to fifty-eight. Dale Kelly fadeaway jump shot underneath Dre sites rebounding fakes goes up that basket will not count. Too long in the lane. No foul is called. The preliminary indication looked like he was pointing to the lane. But well, a foul is called. Mike Dreisaitz goes up to shoot the foul, and it was against number 41, the new man, Estes Ross. A one and one. Paul Gilliam gets the rebound for Thornton. Here comes Dick Rattery down court, three on one, but they slow it down. They want ball control here and use up that clock. They've got a 12-point lead. Feed into Gilliam. Into the corner and out to the backcourt once again. A minute and a half left to play. Lamar Thomas going for the ball is fouled by Barry Swanson. Barry Swanson drawing the foul. That's three personals on Swanson. Lamar Thomas is at the line for Thornton. A minute and 25 seconds left to play. Violet with the rebound feeds off. There's Jasperson's layup, no good, and Thornton has it. <laughs> Foul call against Bruce LaViolette, stopping the clock with one minute and three seconds left. And Thornton looks to be 63 seconds away from being the 1966 state champion. The score is 70 to 58. And at the line is Garland Mays, number 21 for Thornton. He hits. Steve <laughs> Marshall comes into the ball game, replacing Barry Swanson for Galesburg. Steve Marshall, the senior. 71 to 58 to score now as Galesburg gets that rebound. Dale Kelly driving into the circle. Can't get loose to shoot. Boy, they've been covering him tonight beautifully. Dreisaitz lets one go and hits. Mike Dreisaitz makes it 71 to 60. 45 seconds left to play in the game. And Rattery drives in and lays it home. Dick Rattery, 24 points. 73 to 60. And Thornton gets the ball again. 25 seconds left to play in the game. And now the Thornton players' faces are breaking out into occasional grins. They know they've got it. 10 seconds left. Whistle blows. Basket will not count. Nine seconds left to play. Coming in for Galesburg, number 24, Leon Luckett. Number 40, Eugene Finley. And look at this. Got it. Boy, are they happy kids. Oh, this is a moment of triumph, supreme triumph. When they finally see the clock on the wall, tolling off a championship year. <laughs> Esther Ross is at the free throw line for Thornton. 
It's in there. Makes it 74 to 60. Rebounds. Ross has it again. Fadeaway jumper is over the rim. It's just about the end of the game. There it is. The gun sounds. And now the Thornton celebration is on. Coach Bob Anderson is hoisted into the air. The photographer is taking the picture of it as they prepare for the trophy presentation behind him. And we find the, out what the Wildcat mascot looks like as we see him uh, headless as far as being a Wildcat is concerned at the bottom of your screen. A startlingly powerful display by Thornton High School of Harvey. Defeating Galesburg 74 to 60. Holding the vaunted Dale Kelly to 12 points. And the Thornton Rooters are waving at you as the team gathers out of the court. It is a tremendous moment. Thornton finished fourth here last year. And as the fans whoop it up, they are the champions this year. And now the moment of realization has arrived for the victors to receive tribute as the top-ranking basketball team in the state. Let's join Al Willis, Executive Secretary of the Illinois High School Association, for the presentation of the runner-up and championship trophies for this 59th high school tournament. Fans, the car caravan will meet the team at Route 54 and Balmer Road at about 1.30 tomorrow and, and should arrive in Harvey at 2 o'clock. It's at 1.30, 54 and Balmer Road, arriving in Harvey at 2 p.m. gentlemen may I have your attention your attention please and now for the presentation of the runner-up and the champion trophies to the winning team <laughs> ladies and gentlemen Before we present the championship and runner-up trophy, before we present the championship and runner-up trophy, we should pause for just a minute to express our appreciation to the University of Illinois and to the many people who have helped us in making this tournament the very fine success that it has been. Our officials, our Let's have it quiet, drivers, please. Our floor men, our cheerleaders, and all of you wonderful people who have been such wonderful sport in helping us to make it a fine success. We want to thank you very much. And now, to make the presentations, I should like to present to you Mr. Harry Fitzhugh, the president of the Illinois High School Association from Franklin, Illinois, who will make the presentation. Mr. Fitzhugh. Thank you, Mr. Willis. During the past few weeks, 746 Illinois high schools have participated 
in this 59th annual Illinois State High School Basketball Tournament Series. Thousands of fans here at the Assembly Hall, this beautiful Assembly Hall at the University of Illinois, and millions more of fans on television have seen these 18 finalists battle it out for tournament honors. In behalf of these fans, we thank these teams for their fine performances. Coach John Field, we'd like for you to come forward. <laughs> Coach John, we have here some miniature silver basketball for you and the members of your squad. Coach John Field has an enviable record as a basketball coach. In his 11 years as coach of the Galesburg Streaks, he has brought his teams to the state finals on seven different occasions. This is a fine coaching record and congratulations. <laughs> the Galesburg Silver Streaks have made 21 trips to the state finals. They won the state championship in 1913. They were runner-ups in 1912 and 1931 and in 1966. We would like for the team to come forward, please. And to this fine Galesburg basketball club, it's with a great deal of honor that we present to you, fine young men, this second place trophy for your excellent performance here. You've won great honor to yourselves, to your school, and to your community. Congratulations, boys. Anderson of the Thornton team of Harvey has a record which is going to be hard to beat. Before assuming the head coaching duties this year, he was the sophomore coach for eight years and made an enviable record and has brought these boys along. This is his first year as the head basketball coach and a state championship is brought to his school. our miniature gold basketball, Bob, for you and your team. <laughs> the Thornton of Harvey Wildcats are no strangers at this tournament. They won the state tournament series back in 1933. They were runner-ups in 1934, again in 1935, again in 1961. And last year they won fourth place and this year, the most coveted crown, state champion. Come in, boy. This is the greatest honor that can come to a high school basketball team. You're great champions. We're proud of you. And may you always remain champions. Congratulations, boys. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Drive home safely. We'd like to see you all back next year. Good night, and thank you very much. Pardon. Jack Treese is on his way to Tournament Central to give you a summary of the championship game. Then Vince Lloyd will bring us an interview with the coaches and the members of the winning team. You know, we all take pride in the great performance of the many teams we've seen during this tourney. Here's why so many people take pride in this state as well. Did you know that Illinois leads 48 other states in the number of PhDs awarded each year? Or that one out of every five doctors in the entire United States received all or part of his training in a medical school or a hospital right here in Illinois? These are just some of the facts of leadership. There are many more. All of them show great promise for this state. 
And that is precisely the theme of this series of public service advertisements, now appearing throughout the state, developed and sponsored by Illinois Bell. Simply stated, they all say one thing, take pride in the promise of Illinois. Take pride, because our children will inherit a bright future, a future based on the adventures of our own great people and their discoveries, the speed of light, the jet stream, the control of atomic energy. Take pride in the present, in all the aerospace and research facilities that make Illinois uniquely qualified to meet the challenges of the space age. Take pride in that our children will have the opportunity to work and to play in this land of promise. We say, take pride to those who would come and build in this state. For here lies an abundance of technical and scientific talent. We say, take pride to all those now searching for a place where their hopes and aspirations can be fulfilled. And we say, take pride so that this state continues to grow and prosper. For this is essential if our own business is to grow and prosper too. We invite you to write for this free booklet. It contains a series of eight advertisements describing why you should take pride in the promise of Illinois. And we ask you to pass these messages along so all shall know that Illinois has the promise and the means to fulfill it. Bob Starr and I will have the summary of the championship game in a moment, then we'll be joining Vince Lloyd for an interview with the 1966 state champions. First, let's switch to Ed McMahon. This marks the 15th year Illinois Bell Telephone has brought you this great event on television. And over the years, your comments and criticism have been very helpful. We certainly hope that you'll drop us a line this year to let us know how you think we've done. Just drop us a letter or a card, send it to Illinois Bell, Box 5995, Chicago, Illinois. That's Illinois Bell, Box 9, rather, Box 5995, Chicago, Illinois. Now, here are Jack and Bob with a summary of this championship game. Well, to summarize it, uh, Thornton looked to have the game completely under control, Bob, until they lost Jim Ard on fouls, and that livened things up considerably, but they had just too much of a margin for Galesburg to conquer, and I would say that the control of... Dale Kelly, with a tremendous Thornton defense, was the key to their success. They seem to keep somebody on him all the time, either uh, uh, Rettery or Lamar Thomas uh, were always on him with one phase or other. And expertly so. Right. Uh, Dale Kelly, who scored 37 points this afternoon, was held to 12 points. It wasn't too long ago that that would not be exactly holding a player, but in Dale Kelly's sense, it certainly is. Dale Kelly looked like he was a cinch to also break Ted Kaya's scoring record, but uh, didn't come close. And that's a point worthy of note that Joe Wiley of Bellsville is the new individual tournament scoring record holder with a total of 128 points, breaking the old record by seven. Other scores for Galesburg, Barry Swanson recorded 13 points, Bob Jasperson five, Terry Childers two, Mike Dreisite seven, Dale Kelly 12 as we mentioned, Bruce LaViolet came through with 11 points and came off the bench to do that and that brilliant sophomore we've spoken so much about, Roland McDougal recorded a total of 10. And on the Thornton side, Dick Rattery put Thornton out in front with an explosive first quarter burst, wound up recording a total of 24 points in the game, and certainly was the key to Thornton's offensive success. Jim Ard scored 13, Lamar Thomas 16, and both those boys were key elements in that game for Thornton. Paul Gilliam 11 points, Bob Landowski 6 points. But enough of talking about them, let's talk with them for an interview with the 1966 champions. Let's switch to Vince Lloyd. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. you feeling pretty good? Oh, just fine. You better be. <laughs> you better be. You haven't cooled off yet? No, not yet. All right, fellas, I want you to identify yourselves, and right here is... Bob Landowski. I'm a senior. Bob, congratulations. Thank you. Must be a wonderful thrill, I know. Herschel Lewis. I'm a sophomore. you got a couple more to win, huh? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Paul Gillum, senior. Paul, I saw you with a left-handed shot, and I thought you were right-handed. I am mainly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's back here? Didn't I see something? What's back? Come on over here. What are you doing back here, young fella? Nothing. <laughs> what is your name? Dave Anderson. And what are you? Mascot. And you've been mascot all year? Yes. What grade are you in? Fifth. All right, buddy. Uh, They've been treating you all right? Yes, sir. Plenty of milkshakes? Yes, sir. Okay. How do you feel? Pretty good. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Come on, 
Andy. Lamar, what's he supposed to say? He feels so nice. <laughs> 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 This is Lamar Thomas, of course, number 31. Who's your favorite down here? I'm not going to let you answer that question. You can stand right out here in front of me now. I don't think you'll block too many of us out. How tall are you? I don't know. Don't know? No. Okay. Lamar. Lamar Thomas, senior. What are you going to do? Are you going to go on and play football or basketball? Football, maybe. I don't know about basketball. I'm not sure about not that. I'm sure. You had to change a little bit tonight. You got those four fouls, huh? Yeah, it was real close calls. Uh huh. Well, close calls. <laughs> Very close. Who are you hiding behind here? Uh, my name is Larry Tanner. I'm a junior, and we hope to come back here next year also. Very good. My name is. Man. You what? Oh no. Uh, what you gonna say, Lamar? Huh? My name is Leonard Solomon. I'm a junior. All right, Leonard. Esther Ross, junior. Richard Ratter, senior. What happened to you tonight, anyway? Did you take some pep pills or something before that game? Did you ever start out that hot before and that fast? You were doing everything. A couple of games. What'd you wind up with, you know? 24. You heard uh, Jack Tree say that, didn't yes. you? And you didn't know that you had that money? No, sir. Did you fellas change your style coming into this game at all? No, it was the same game. We usually play out. We played it all year. You did a wonderful job. This young man right behind you here. Got to come on over here. God of me, senior. Yeah, senior. Yeah. And you, uh, you did a great job. You played quite a bit tonight. Thank you. Real well, who's the big fellow behind oh, you? Number, number 35, come on out here, young man. <laughs> Are you really only 6'7"? Uh, that's what I am, 6'7". <laughs> How did you feel about your game tonight? Uh, I think it was a little off. I got in foul trouble real early. But besides that, it was all right. Was he causing you to foul, or uh, was it just one of those things where they're calling him close? I think I was over-anxious, a little over-anxious. You were over-anxious. Mm -hmm. You don't foul out very often, do you? Once in a while, I do. <laughs> were you fellas pretty confident of this one tonight? Well, we thought we could win. Felt you could win? Did you think you could beat him that bad? Uh, you better be careful with your coaches yeah, yeah. here. Yeah. Huh? No, I think we, we felt that we really could beat them. Well, you did a wonderful job. Coach, come on over here. Coach Bob Anderson of the championship <laughs> team. Congratulations to you, Bob. Thank you very much, Vince. I would imagine that this is a, just about as fine a game as these fellows have played. Uh, yes and no. Uh, we haven't been in this serious foul trouble all season. So, but other than that, yes, it was when they're better. What did you bonus. think brought on the foul triple? Well, uh, aggressiveness, I guess you'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you did, uh, the fellas did a great job tonight on one of the finest shooters in this tournament, Dale Kelly, and a fine all-around ball player. But uh, he just wasn't able to get his position, get his favorite shots off tonight with any consistency at all. What was the strategy that you used against him? Well, we started out in a combination, and we knew that he liked to go to his right, so we choked him off over there. And with the McDougal going to the left, we shut him off over there. And we were in a combination zone. Well, you fellows did a great job. I suppose that you've got some great plans for next year already? I haven't thought about next year. Uh, we've been too concerned with this one. When this season started, did you have any idea that you had a championship, potential championship team, Bob? At our first pep assembly, I told the, our student body that I thought that these boys had the makings of uh, one of the finest teams at Thornton Township High School, and they didn't disappoint me at all, nor the students at Thornton. And I know they did a great job. We haven't talked to this young man right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have much uh, to do with uh, the coaching of this fine ball club, but Coach Anderson here has done a tremendous job uh, all year with these boys. In the locker room, uh, he seems to keep the tension at the uh, least. You are? I'm Frank Eccles, scorekeeper. Thank you, Frank. Here's a young man that started on this ball club this year and then suffered a broken foot, I believe it was, wasn't it? Yes. Your name? Richard Halbert, senior. Richard, I know that you've uh, been pulling with for these fellows real hard all year. That beautiful championship trophy there is something to be real proud of, and thank you, fellows. That's it. Now let's get back over to Ed McMahon. Well, friends, it's just about time to say good night. So on behalf of Illinois Bell, we hope you've enjoyed this telecast of the Illinois High School Association Basketball Tournament. And we hope too that some of the messages you've seen will help you get the most out of your telephone service, making it more enjoyable, more convenient, and economical for you. For in the end, the real pleasure of our performance isn't a matter of statistics, it's a matter of serving you the way you want to be served. That's why the people at Illinois Bell try to do their job a little better, a little more thoroughly than might be expected.
to keep trying to exceed your expectations. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. And thanks to you, Ed McMahon. We hope that uh, all of you have enjoyed our basketball tournament as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. All I can add, Vince, is our congratulations to Thornton of Harvey, the champions for 1966. And our congratulations, too, to all the teams that took part in this 59th state championship tournament. Our administrative engineers here in Champaign-Urbana have been Charles Ruthers and Jack Myers. Production manager has been Leroy Oliger. Fred Brown, Dick Flanders, and Don Struckel were our assistant directors. Our associate director has been Bill Lotzer. The director of this telecast has been Jack Jacobson. And now this is Jack Drees, along with Ed McMahon, Vince Lloyd, and Bob Starr, wishing you good night for all your friends and neighbors at Illinois Bell. Portions of this program were mechanically reproduced. This telecast has been produced for Illinois Bell Telephone by N.W. Air. Our producers have been Ray Girardin, Ted Schulte, Ron Sims, and Dick Golden. And Don Aries. Our executive producer, Rick Hawley. This has been a presentation of WGN Television Sports.